Welcome back to our grand voyage on how to hoist your point cloud treasure into the bustling port of Revit for some truly inspiring landlubber design. Whether ye be a fresh swabby to Revit or a weathered old salt craving an advanced treasure map, this be your trusty guide through the treacherous seas of interoperability, teaching ye the cunning ways to masterfully commandeer your scan booty and expand in our crafty playflow horizons in this series. Now we shan't be diving into every hidden nook of this port, but with a bit of practice you'll be constructing your very own fortresses with point cloud treasure from Cupix quicker than you can bellow land ho. Pull into port by hoisting up Autodesk Revit by either double-tapping the Revit icon on your desktop or navigating through your start menu. Upon the Revit start screen, click on New on the port side. A chart will unfurl where you can select a Revit template, or if your voyage demands a peculiar setup, you may choose a more fitting template from the depths of your hold by browsing to your own. This be my choice. I like me own template and you can choose it too. If you follow along with me, I'd be providing a link later on in this video. Before we plunge into the murky depths of integrating our point cloud treasure, let's take a spell to familiarize ourselves with the lay of the land and some of Revit's rigging. If this be your first time docking here, don't keel over. This overview will help you navigate the layout of Revit, setting a sturdy keel for more advanced marauding. And if you be one of me salty AEC professionals, you might skip ahead, though you could be missing out on a shiny prize or two. In the top left corner, you'll spy the application menu, oft called the Big R. A click here unfurls a menu brimming with choices like New, Open, Save and Export. This also be where you can meddle with Revit settings and other such gears. Directly below the application menu lies the ribbon. The ribbon harbors all of Revit's tools at port, neatly organized into tabs and panels. Each tab speaks to a different part of the building design and modeling journey, such as architecture, structure, and tales of yore. Within these tabs, you'll uncover panels. These panels gather together tools for tasks like modeling, amending, and managing your craft. Next, on the port side of the screen, you'll spot the properties palette. This space reveals the properties of any selected elements or views you be inspecting. It allows you to adjust particulars like dimensions, materials, and how visible your settings are. If you have nothing selected, the Properties panel will display the properties for your current view. And anything you do have selected will update the Properties panel and the ribbon, showing ye all the options available for that piece of work. Nestled below the Properties palette be the Project Browser. This pane sorts and displays all your views, sheets, groups, families and treasures found here in port. You can double-click any item in the project browser to open it in the workspace or to make adjustments in the properties panel. At the helm, you find the view control bar. This be your steering wheel to the display properties of the current view. Here you can swap visual styles, adjust shadow settings and set your drawing scales. The status bar, resting at the very bottom of the Revit window, offers feedback, tips and warnings about the tools and actions ye are engaging in. It's a trusty guide for charting your course if you find yourself in rough waters while docked in port. Best heed its warnings as ye advance in your Revit mastery. Above the ribbon perches the Quick Access Toolbar. This handy toolbar can be decked out with shortcuts to the tools you reach for most, such as save, undo, redo and the like, for drawing or tweaking your plans. Last, but by no means least, is the heart of the Revit interface, known as the workspace. This be where your project takes shape and where most of your designing and modeling adventures happen. Now that you're acquainted with the workings of this port, let's find our sea legs and learn how to steer through these digital waters. To zoom, roll the scroll wheel on your mouse. For more precise zoom control, lay your hands on the Zoom in Region tool from the navigation bar. To pan, press and hold the scroll wheel, that be your middle mouse button, then sway your mouse in the direction you wish to sail. Now if you find yourself in a 3D view, you'll spy the view cube. Clicking on any face, edge or corner of the cube will orient the view accordingly. This be a swift and easy method to switch twixt standard views like the top, front or side views. To orbit, 
hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button as if you'd be maneuvering the helm in a gale. Revit also offers a full helm for navigation, which you can access by clicking the navigate wheel icon on the view control bar. The navigation wheel provides you with tools for zooming, panning, orbiting, and even walking through your model as if you'd be on the deck of your own ship. If this be your first time manning the decks of Revit, it may seem a bit overwhelming, but fear not. A bit of tinkering about and you'll be navigating as smoothly as a sloop in favorable winds. Mastering keyboard shortcuts can also hasten your journey, making you as quick as the most seasoned BIM buccaneer. Now that you have the know-how to sail within the model, you're ready to start integrating and working with your point cloud treasure. But first we need be setting a few things up. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, eh? We need to create a plan view to import our point cloud treasure into. In your project, navigate to the ribbon at the top of the screen and locate the view tab on the ribbon. This tab hoists all the tools related to viewing and organizing the different views in your Revit project. Within the view tab, scour the create panel. Here you'll find options to craft various types of views needed for beholding our treasure later on. To create a new floor plan, click on Plan Views drop-down and select Floor Plan. You will then be prompted to select the level for which you want to create the view. Plan Views be linked to the deck, so too will our Point Cloud Treasure be hosted by these levels. So anything ye draw or model in this view will also be anchored here. Best take care to ensure ye are on the level ye intended. For our purposes, we want our Point Cloud Treasure to be imported into the first level or ground floor. Now with our view created, it's a good idea to take a moment and make sure our spyglass be clean and the new view is set up properly. Navigate to view settings on the port side properties panel and look for view range. Or if you be listened to your captain, you can use the shortcut VR to open the view range dialog box. Here we want to set the cut plane or section high above any point in our point cloud treasure. I am going to set the cut plane to 100 and for the top mast or max viewable height, 200. Then depths of this trove to unlimited, all the way down to Davy Jones's locker. This way, all of the point cloud treasure will be visible. Like I said, I be a greedy sort and fancy seeing all me treasure at once. After creating your new plan view, find it in the project browser on the port side and give her a fit name so you can find her later. Aye, now we be getting to the plundering part. To anchor your point cloud treasure, hoist yourself aloft to the insert tab. Now jab at the link point cloud button from the panel. In the dialog box that appears, browse to your recap file we forged in our last adventure, select the RCP file and click open. Once our recap booty is safely aboard, Revit will parlay with ye with a chart on where you'd fancy placing it. Here you have a few choices to pick from, auto center to center, manually, or by shared coordinates. We shan't be plunging into those deeps yet, so center to center be my choice. Behold, your point cloud treasure now proudly sits in Revit's port. From here, ye can deploy your treasure in a myriad of ways and do whatever ye fancy with it for coordinating your designs and builds. But if ye be a wise sailor, heed my advice. For myself, I like to get me treasure level on the deck and pointing in the right direction. A good captain always knows his bearings, so I'll be setting me bounty facing in the correct direction, due north. I know this direction be truly north because of me charts and plan before coming to port. For ye own treasure, Google Earth be a good chart to get your bearings. So let's set the sail and rotate our point cloud treasure to align with the real world. Simply select it and in the ribbon aloft, choose Rotate. You have a few options to pick from and where you would like to rotate it from, but I'll be letting the Revit Harbour Master take the helm and position it from the centre of the point cloud for now. Next, I'll be making sure me treasure ain't below the waterline, meaning I want to know it's sitting at the correct elevation on deck, in the vertical position. There be a heap of mounds in me point cloud booty of Pirate Cove and I want to ensure its elevation is correct before setting out to design me pirate hideout so as to get the correct heights away from would-be soldiers come to take me real treasures. From our plan view, click on the view tab and under create click on section. This will carve a cut in the view through our site plan. In the workspace, select a point, drag in your mouse in the direction you want the section to be made. 
Then click again to finalize creating the view. Reminds me of running a man through, eh? To open your new section view, ye can navigate through the project browser window or simply right-click on the section annotation and select Open View. It looks like the treasure needs to shift a smidge. To adjust it like before, ye can select the point cloud treasure and then choose Move from the Modify panel on the ribbon. Or for a more seasoned maneuver, simply use the arrow keys on your keyboard in the heading you would like your treasure to go by, giving it a nudge. Ah, much better that. Take a moment to survey your bounty's placement by zooming and panning around. You can also take a gander at your point cloud treasure in 3D by creating a new 3D view from the view tab or simply clicking the small cottage icon aloft in the quick access toolbar to summon a default 3D view. Give it some color and adjust the visual style to wireframe or shaded to better spy how it melds with your model. By default, the point cloud treasure will flaunt the RGB values, but other hidden options for display be also available. Once everything looks shipshape, save your project by clicking File from the top left menu and then by clicking Save As. Give your project a unique name and choose a secure location to stash your newfound treasure. No sense in letting His Majesty or any prying eyes know the whereabouts of your secret base, eh? Congratulations, me hearties! You've now mastered the integration of your point cloud treasure into the bustling port of Revit. Ye can delve deeper into how ye might use this knowledge in your design process to craft more accurate and awe-inspiring designs for the land and sea. I do beg your pardon if ye be a tad disheartened at your captain for not revealing every part of our play flow for modeling me secret hideout. Fear not, we'll be dropping anchor at this port again to show ye how to further your skills here in the grand port of Revit. In the meantime, there be many a bim buccaneer amongst our crew to help ye set sail on your own modeling adventures. As for meself and me crew, we chart a course for our next destination, Twin Motion. There we'll be showing ye how to elevate your 3D modeling with textures, 3D assets and much more. If ye be keen to join our crew, make sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget about the hidden treasure we discussed earlier, eh? Best tack back if you missed it in the video. Until we meet again, me hearties, stay nerdy. This be your captain signing off.